Good to see your beautiful faces this morning. As always, we have some, we'll have some things that are um, that responsive that I'll need some people to read the response and we'll have some prayers and scriptures that are available for other people to read as well. So let's worship the Lord this morning. Who would like to be the respondent? Travis and I'll do it. Okay. This comes from Matthew eleven twenty-eight 28 through 30. Come to me, all you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens. Lord, Lord that, that sounds, sounds like, like me today. today. I will give you rest. I will rest in you. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. We want, we want to, to listen, listen and learn. learn. I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. We will, we will rest, rest in your goodness. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. We will, we will trust, trust in your ways. This is our psalm this morning. It's very short. Who would like to read our very short psalm this morning? I can read it. Okay. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Extol him, all you peoples. For great is his steadfast love towards us, and the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's pray. God, you are worthy of our praise. You have invited us to come to you in our weariness, when we are burdened, and when we need help. We can trust that you will lead us with kindness and gentleness. When we are overwhelmed, remind us of your presence. When we are stressed, remind us of your promised rest. As we gather in your name this morning, call us to walk in your peace. Amen. All right, sing with me, Be Thou My Vision. Be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart. Not be all else to me, save that thou art. Thou my best thought by day or by night. Waking or sleeping, thy presence my life. Be thou my wisdom, and thou my true word. I ever with thee, and thou with me, Lord. Thou my great Father, I thy true son, thou in me dwelling, and I with thee one. Riches I heed not, nor man's empty praise, thou mine inheritance, now and always. Thou and thou only first in my heart. High King of heaven, my treasure thou art. High King of heaven, my victory won. May I reach heaven's joys, Oh, bright heaven's sun, heart of mine own heart, whatever befall, still be my vision, O oh, ruler of all. This 
this is our sermon scripture this morning. And I want us to pay attention to these themes that are in this, in this section about power and position and um, how Jesus responds to his disciples and to others in their, in their vying for position and power. Mark 9, starting with verse 33. Who is the greatest? Then they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, what were you arguing about on the way? But they were silent, for on the way they had argued with one another, who was the greatest? He sat down, called the twelve, and said to, him, to them, whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Then he took a little child and put it among them, and taking it in his arms, he said to them, whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. John said to him, teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to stop him because he was not following us. But Jesus said, do not stop him, for no one who does a deed of power in my name will be able soon afterward to speak evil of me. Whoever is not against us is for us. For truly, I tell you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you bear the name of Christ will by no means lose the reward. If any of you put a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believe in me, it would be better for you if a great millstone were hung around your neck and you were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life maimed than to have two hands and go to hell to the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame than to have two feet and be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to stumble, tear it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and to be thrown into hell, where the worm never dies and the fire is never quenched. For everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good, but if salt has lost its saltiness, how can you season it? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. I'm going back here and I would like to talk just through these three sections of scripture this morning. They seem like they're kind of disjointed, but I want to tell you this morning that I think they have a contiguous theme. So Jesus and his disciples, if you remember last week, had just witnessed this um, this release of this boy who had been afflicted by a, a, an evil spirit or something that had thrown him into the fire that had sought to do him harm. And the father had said, I believe, help my unbelief. So Mark puts this story directly after that. Jesus has cast out a demon. The, the father has said, I believe, help my unbelief. And the last word is Jesus telling his disciples, that that kind of spirit can only come out through prayer. Then Mark says, immediately following this, they go to Capernaum. And I don't know if you remember, but Capernaum is the hometown of Peter. And it's that place where they sort of made their home base, their headquarters, when they were in the region of the Galilee. So they go back to Capernaum. And while they're on their way to Capernaum, they're arguing about who is the greatest. They were arguing about which one of them was the greatest. And Jesus knows what they've been doing. I think this is hilarious. And he didn't confront them on the way. He waits until they're in the house. And he says, hey, what were you all arguing about back there? What had you so riled up? But they were silent. They were silent because they did not want to admit that they had been arguing about who was the greatest. But Jesus knew, and he sat them down, 
and he called over a little child. He called over a little child. He says, whoever wants to be first among you must be last of all and servant of all. Now, these are, these are familiar words to us because we've read the Gospels, we've heard about Jesus, we know that this is Jesus, one of Jesus' teachings. We've heard these words before. But I want us to think about what the implication is. What is the implication when Jesus says, if you want to be great, you need to be last. If you want to be great, you need to be a servant. It's certainly not the way it looks in the world around us, right? When people want to gain position and power in our world, in our culture, in our society, what do they do? Do they serve everybody and take care of everybody? Do they put themselves at the back of the line? No, they do not. That is not what gets people to the top. And it wasn't what got people to the top in Jesus' day either. These guys were jockeying for position. Who's going to sit next to Jesus? Who's going to be the one who um, stands the closest or sits the closest? Who is going to be Jesus' favorite? And I imagine there was more than uh, just a little bit of elbowing and verbal shoving, if not physical shoving, involved in this conversation. And Jesus says, you've got it all wrong, guys. You've got it all wrong. He says, whoever welcomes such a little child in my name welcomes me. And if you welcome me, you welcome the Father. So stop trying to get close to me. Stop trying to push each other out of the way so you can sit closer or stand closer. Go find somebody who needs help and help them. Go find somebody who is weak and lift them up. Go find a child and attend to their need. And then John, I have to think, it's funny when, when uh, the gospel writers will name other, other uh, disciples, right? Especially when it's something that they say that Jesus then uh, rebukes or refutes. So Mark says, well, John said to him, John said to him. So I think even in the writing of the gospels, sometimes the gospel writers uh, compiling these stories, we're still doing a little bit of the former, right? They were still jockeying for position just a little bit. John said to him, teacher, well, we saw somebody casting out demons in, in your name, and we tried to stop him because he was not following us. Hmm. Jesus tells him, don't stop people who are doing good things in my name. Don't stop people who are doing good things in my name, even if you don't agree with them. Even if you think maybe they're not following closely enough. Jesus says, look, if somebody does a deed of power in my name, they're kind of tied then to the name of Jesus. They won't be able to say something bad about me soon after that. because." By using that power, by attaching themselves to the name of Jesus, they are attaching not only this thing that they're doing to the name of Jesus, but their own personal reputation as well. Jesus says, whoever is not against us is for us. That is also an attitude that I wish we would take to heart a little bit more. How many people are out there who would love to join in the good work of the kingdom of God, who get the door shut in their face because they're not one of us, because we don't think they agree enough with what we believe or with what we say. Jesus said, whoever is not against us is for us. Truly, I tell you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you bear the name of Christ, will by no means lose the reward. Sometimes we get a little too concerned 
with our purity tests, with our you must subscribe to all of these different points to the letter. Jesus says, open the door wider. Accept those who are willing to enter in. Those who are willing to give you a cup of cold water. Those who are willing to tie their name and their reputation to the name and reputation of Jesus. This last part here, Jesus says, if you put a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believe in me, who's he talking about there? If we look at the immediately preceding verses, he's talking, yes, about little children, but he's also talking about people who have just a little bit of faith. People whose faith is small. If you put a stumbling block in front of one of these little ones who believe in me, it would be better for you if a great millstone were hung around your neck and you were thrown into the sea. These are some more hard words of Jesus that I think we need to take to heart. How often do we put stumbling blocks in front of those who long to believe, whose faith is small, who maybe aren't there yet? We need to take it seriously. Jesus then talks about these things that are a benefit to us, our hands, our eyes, our feet. These things are a benefit for us. Our hands help us to do all of these things. Our eyes help us to see all of these things. Our feet help us to go where we want to go, to do the work that we need to do. But Jesus says, if these things that are a benefit to you are a stumbling block, for you or for others, do away with them. Do away with them. It's better to not have advantages. It's better to be disadvantaged than it is to continue on a path that puts stumbling blocks between you and God or between other people and God. When I think about all of these things, and I think about these themes of power, these things of themes of position, these themes of jockeying for who is right and who is in and who's on the outside. And I think about our world today. How much better would the world be if we as followers of Jesus chose to take a low position? Instead of jockeying for power and places of authority, what if we took the role of a servant? What if we took it seriously that those who are not against us are for us? Instead of looking at those who don't agree with us completely and saying they're the enemy, what if we said even a cup of cold water will accept it? What if we took it seriously that the things that bring us benefit the things that give us an advantage in life, the things that give us a head, a head start. What if we took it seriously that if those things were a problem for us in our spiritual lives, for other people around us in their spiritual lives, that we set them aside? What would the world look like? Jesus closes this section, or Mark gives... Jesus, these closing words in this section. For everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good, but if salt has lost its saltiness, how can you season it? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. I think here Jesus is talking about temple sacrifices, which were all salted. And I think we've talked about this, oh, I don't know, it's been a while back that the salt um, in spiritual conversations oftentimes referred to something being dedicated to God. And in one manuscript here, it says, for everyone will be salted with tears. So tears or fire, 
whichever one doesn't sound pleasant to me. But the salt is a reference to our lives being dedicated to God. Salt is good. Our dedication to God is good. But if it loses its flavor, it's hard to go back and reignite it. Jesus says, have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. Here's some thoughts to ponder. In this passage and in our day, power and the pecking order are in full force. But Jesus is in these three sections defying everyone's paradigm. If you were to ask who's the most powerful person in a room, it would not naturally be the child. If you were to ask who is of benefit for my cause, we would not naturally assume that it's the person who is not completely on board. If we were to ask, what is it that we need to do to follow Jesus more closely? Oftentimes the answer we receive is, you need to build up your strength. You need to use your advantages. You need to use your position and your tools and all of the things at your disposal. And Jesus is saying the reverse, isn't he? Instead of saying, use your advantages for the kingdom, he's saying, if your advantages are a problem, lay them down. Jesus is saying, how we treat the weak matters. This salt, referring to the practice of salting temple sacrifices, calls us to live lives that are dedicated to God. Dedicated to God as we serve the weak. Dedicated to God as we accept those whose faith is weak. Dedicated to God as we sometimes must make ourselves weak in order to follow in Jesus' footsteps. When we think about these passages, where do we see people posturing for position today? We see it everywhere, right? We see it in our homes, we see it in our workplaces, we see it in our politics. How are we doing with being like children? Are we willing to admit our needs? Are we willing to recognize our low position? Are we willing to ask for help? As we look at our churches and our lives, are we more concerned with conformity or compassion? Are we looking for everyone to fit into a specific mold? Or are we willing to be compassionate? Are we willing to leave the door open for those whose faith is weak? Living in such a way where we take a low position and a position, a posture of service towards others, when we live in such a way as to open the door to not close it in people's faces. When we live in such a way as to lay down our advantages as soon as they become a stumbling block, we find that we're living in peace. Living as sacrifices offered to God produces peace. Who'd like to read our scripture here from 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 1 through 5? I can. <laughs> Therefore, rid yourselves of all malice and all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and slander of every kind. Like newborn babies crave pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow up in your salvation. Now that you have tasted that the Lord is good, as you come to him, the living stone, rejected by humans, but chosen by God and precious to him, you also, like living stones, 
are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Who would like to offer our prayer for us this morning? I can. Okay. Our God, who has shown us mercy and brought us into your family as dearly loved children, change our hearts. We struggle with pride and envy fed by insecurity. Help us to trust you to care for our needs. Help us set aside our fear and accept your love. Help us to love each other, and especially those who stand on the margins. Thank you that you give us grace to walk in your ways by your spirit who dwells within us. Amen. Would you sing with me, my Jesus, I love thee. My Jesus, I love thee. I know thou art mine. For thee all the follies of sin I resign. My gracious Redeemer, my Savior art thou. If ever I love thee, my Jesus, tis now. I love thee because thou hast first loved me and purchased my pardon on Calvary's tree. I love thee for wearing the thorns on thy brow. If ever I love thee, my Jesus is now. I love thee in life, I will love thee in death, and praise thee as long as thou lendest me breath, and say when the death do lies cold on my brow. If ever I love thee, my Jesus, tis now. In mansions of glory and endless delight, I'll ever adore thee in heaven so bright. I'll sing with the glittering crown on my brow. If ever I love thee, my Jesus, tis now. So let's check in. How are we doing?
I'm looking forward to this afternoon. We're going to go over to Redding Lake and have a picnic and go fishing. So I hope it ends up being a nice day. We can do that. That sounds great. Mom requested chicken and vegetables and some other things for dinner. So we're going to make her that. And I think we're going to play in the garden. Just have a quiet day. I haven't gotten to celebrate Mother's Day with her in person for a long time. So that's going to be nice. Good. Good. And then you guys are going to head towards, head westward on around Wednesday, maybe? Probably. Yeah. We're going to head to Utah and spend a couple days at my sister's. And then Bree will join us <clears throat> and we'll drive to California and then get mom settled. And uh, then we'll fly home. Okay. Well, we will pray for traveling mercies. Thank you. I was just going to say that. They keep us in your thoughts this week as we you yeah. know, navigate not just the road trip, but the weirdness on the road trip. We celebrated uh, Ivan's graduation from college yesterday. Yeah. It was, it was just uh, Chito, you know, Sylvester, his dad, his mom, Rosa, and I, and Mauricio. We just did a little carne asada yesterday. He was really excited and you know, we couldn't celebrate in big time, but um, we're so proud of him. He's going to do um, some, he's, he got hired to do some work at a washroom uh, rural in Topeka. Uh -huh. He's uh, anxious about it because he's never lived home before or lived by himself. So we pray and we told him that everything is going to be okay. We're only a phone call away, but he's excited and... Um, He's, he's excited. So he didn't get to do his student teaching. He has to take some classes for the summer. He's going to be packed in doing some online stuff this summer. But come August, he's going to be moving to Topeka. So hopefully, if you remember, keep him in uh, your prayers. I couldn't believe that Hoyle is getting... Going to community, he's going to be going to community college over there. He doesn't know what he's going to study, but he's also a senior. And I'm going, Oh my gosh, what happened? <laughs> but, um, he's kind of excited about it. He's into music, so I don't know what he's going to do, but he's going to attend community college over there. I just want to give you guys an update on them, too. Yeah, be sure to send them our love and tell them that we rejoice with them. We're so excited for those milestones. Those are wonderful. Yes, I told him yesterday that uh, some people asked for, about them and all that, and he says he misses everybody so much. Um, they're kind of sad about Nelly. He remembers her, and mm -hmm. so, but um, he he sent their love to everybody too. He's a wonderful kid. He'll do great things, I'm sure. That's why we told him, I said, and he's, I don't know, he's so insecure about that. He said, I don't know, it's going to be tough. <laughs> oh, he'll do good. Yeah, he would do good. They all did. I mean, we we thank the Chito and uh, uh, his dad and Rosa because they're doing so good with the three kids, you know. It was hard. They were so easily couldn't go on the other way, but they're all doing so good. Ruth is doing good. She's working hard as a nurse over there. She got a couple scares, you know, but she's still working and she's doing good. Very busy. So we're thankful for that. Uh, God is protecting her too. Good. Yeah, Nellie's service, that information, I sent it out on text message and on our Facebook Messenger group for the church ladies. Uh, but if you can think of anybody else who needs to know, would you pass that on? I made phone calls on Thursday and Friday and, and caught some people with the news, but I didn't have the information about the service or the funeral or anything yet. So, so if you think of it, you think, think of somebody who might need to know who's not 
text Abby, give him a call. So. Charity is uh, Marilyn Schrock. Is that Nellie's daughter then? Yes, okay. that's Nellie's daughter. She's the um, oldest and she lives in Olathe. Okay. And she kind of lives in Texas at the same time. So <laughs> but, but kind of back and forth quite a bit. That's not the daughter that usually took her to church here? No, okay. that's Mardella. Okay. And she lives in Missouri and she's coming. Okay. So they'll be here for the service, but they were not here yet yesterday when we um, we met to, to plan the service. So. Well, thanks for sending the info anyway. Absolutely. And they said that they are going to have a, a celebration of life service in Missouri sometime this summer um, when they're able to, when people are able to gather again. So. Evelyn, I like your vase of flowers. Those are beautiful. They are. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not you, Evelyn. <laughs> there. Now you're unmuted, Evelyn. Yeah. Nope, nope, we can't quite hear you. Those are beautiful. Yeah. Wow. There she is. <laughs> Charity, how are the kids doing? They're doing pretty good. They're in the kids' room this morning. They turned the camera off, I guess, but they're doing okay. They've got one more full week of school and then two days. So they'll be they'll be done on the nineteenth. So Getting close. Yeah. I'm sure you're ready for that to be over with. I, there are so many things, <laughs> <laughs> so many feelings that I have from day to day about what I would really like to be doing. So I read a, an article today about six boys that were stuck on a, de on a deserted island for 15 months. I think I'd like to try that. <laughs> that might be kind of fun. Without the six boys. I don't want the six boys there, just me. <laughs> I had text, text Daniel yesterday and I got an auto reply from his phone and he had just turned off all technology for one full day because I think he just needs to recharge and just step back from all of the craziness and that kind of it worried me for a little bit, but then I just had to realize that maybe we all need to do that, even just for a couple of hours. Just turn the technology off, walk away from the phones for a little bit, and just just settle down. I don't know. I, I do that daily. It's it's called sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> I am envious that you can do that at the drop of a hat. I have to have all conditions just right. Yeah. I've gotten into the bad habit of just falling asleep on whatever soft piece of furniture I'm at. <laughs> Those are called old, old man naps and I'm jealous. <laughs> He doesn't have anybody to come jump on him and wake him up. Mm. We'll give it a couple weeks though, and then he will. So. Yeah. <laughs> um, elders, we probably need to meet on Tuesday. So, okay. Um, and I think, uh, Debbie, we can use this link. Is that right? Uh, yeah, you should be able to. Um, Since it's a recurring meeting, we can just click on it anytime, I think. Well, it's officially scheduled for Sunday. Um, yeah. But let me, uh, it, let's experiment. Okay. Maybe you and I can, can text tomorrow and we'll try it for just, and then if not, I'll set something up for you. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. That way we'll, it's just the, the number of people. It's either that or have a 40 minute elders meeting. We could do that. <laughs> Meeting part one, meeting part two. <laughs> there you go. There you go. So, yep. 
All right, for those who want to go to the graveside service tomorrow, you're welcome to. We're going to set up a sound system. You might even be able to hear something. <laughs> or if you want to, you can just um, send a card or a note either through Roberts Blue or to Margella in Olathe, and the family will get those, those notes and letters. Okay. Is that at 10 o'clock, Charity? It's at 11, at 11 at the Memorial um, Memorial Lawn Cemetery, and it's at the Pavilion. Okay. So. I know I ask a lot, but um, okay, just a minute. The kids are missing out on their visit with their mamas because she's made some inappropriate decisions so the judge took away her visiting rights and um they're missing it she's missing it and blaming me for all of that but anyhow we're hoping that in two weeks they get to take a trip back to her to see her for the weekend so keep us in prayers definitely yes a tough situation we know that the kids need to see their mom but at the same time they need to be safe so um it's just hard so we're with you charlotte i appreciate that Charity, how's the packing going? My mother packed my china this weekend. She's here again. So she came up yesterday. She came up and I think she got here about noon. And um, so she's, she's, she's been packing. I have not. <laughs> so that's how the packing's going. Um, it's, it's funny because I'm looking around and a lot of things are already in containers. So some of that packing will be really easy. Like my craft supplies, we'll just put the shoe box size boxes in a bigger box, that kind of thing. Um, and I'm still trying to go through and sort things out and not pack, not pack and move things that I don't need to keep. So trying to let it be a uh, refining experience. So. All right, guys. Well, let's pray uh, for one another. We can pray for Debbie and her mom and Bree in their travels. And we can pray for Charlotte and the Rainsbargers and the Plummer family and the kids. And for Nellie's family. And we can rejoice for um, the Campos family and for Yvonne that he's, you know, graduated. And anything else? Am I missing anything? All right, let's pray. God, we thank you for your presence with us, and we thank you for the challenges that we've heard today to take a position of lowliness and service, of love and meekness, of humility and kindness and compassion. God, show us where we sometimes get it wrong and help us to be um, willing to repent and go a different way, to set aside the things we thought gave us strength, but really were holding us back. God, we pray that you would be with um, Debbie and Bree and Jan as they travel. We pray that you keep them safe, that they would have a good time of bonding that they would have time, Lord, to grieve together, to laugh together, that everything would go smoothly with their travel plans. God, we pray for Jan as she gets settled back in her house without her husband. And what a difficult thing 
that will be for her. We pray for peace and for comfort. We pray, God, that she would feel the presence of connection to her community and her family. God, we pray for the um, Nellie Owens family. We pray for them as they grieve her loss. We pray for all of the aftermath that comes in losing the matriarch of a family. God, we pray that there would be peace and not contention between the siblings. We pray that there would be shared grief and shared memories and shared joy. God, we pray for the Rainsbarger family and for the Plummer family. God, we pray for your solution. We don't know what it is. We don't know how to fix this thing. We don't know how to, uh, what words to say or even what actions to take sometimes. But God, we trust that you can do what we cannot. We trust that you are able to work in Kylie's life and Barbara's life. We trust that you are able to work in little Ian and little Kara in their hearts and lives. We trust that you are able to work in the Rainsbargers to give them wisdom and to give them peace. God, we thank you for the triumphs and the victories that we are celebrating this week for Ivan and his graduation. God, we pray for the Campos family that you would continue to keep Ruth safe. Lord, we thank you that uh, even in the times when we are overwhelmed, even in times when we don't know what to do, that you've promised to be with us. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for the offer of peace. And God, we pray that you would show us, show us that we are not alone. Help us to reach out to one another in love and, and service. Help us to seek a low position. Help us to step off of our judgmental platform. Help us to follow you more closely. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, God bless you guys. You too. You as well. <laughs> yes. <laughs>